the hyphenation is because I was in I was Yvonne Dolphin for a very long time and then um, I married the love of my life and didn't want to lose my identity so I hyphenated it um, I'm as as Steve said I'm a cricket umpire um, I'm um, on the West of England Premier League uh, panel um, so that's men's cricket um, to a very high level um, I'm also, I was very honoured last season to, uh, we, I, there was a little bit of cricket last season behind closed doors. Um, I umpired um, the Rachel Hayho Flint tournament, which you can catch on uh, YouTube, etc, etc. Um, I'm very proud to be on the Blind Cricket England and Wales panel. Basically, if it's cricket, then I'm involved. I absolutely love cricket. I probably shouldn't say this, especially as it's being recorded, but um, cr um, cricket is definitely my crack cocaine. So um, if any of you lovely ladies um, want to or fancy the idea of becoming an umpire, um, please let Steve know later because we are running um, online courses um, up to stage two at the moment. Um, and um, it would say it'll save me standing with um, with the fellas in ladies cricket moving forward. I've got a little presentation for you. Um, I'm going to um, ask you to jot down your questions, even if you don't put them on the chat, just drop them down. Um, and at the end of it, I'm more than happy um, to answer any of your questions, if I can, of course. Um, so I'm going to try and get this to work. Bear with me, girls, please. <laughs> this uh, might not work, but it might. So I'm now sharing my screen with you, hopefully. Um, this is uh, my, my presentation that I've um, hashed from the um, introduction to um, umpiring as put together by the um, England Cricket Board Association of Cricket Officials. Um, unfortunately, that's two fellas, but I'm sure at some point we can get that changed. Um, now, as I said to you, the ECB ACO, that's who I'm a member of. Um, they are the people who who run us umpires, really. They're in charge of the, the recruitment and education of umpires, they support us um, in in our in all ways and our development. Um, if we're really really lucky, we get um, an appointment from the ECB, such as the Rachel Hayho Flint last year, um, and they they look after us, including insurance. So that's a pretty cool thing to have, actually. Um, this course. Uh, per se that I'm going to walk you through tonight um, we're going to talk about the role of the umpire um, you know well really what what are you doing there so what what are you going to think about before the match starts before the call of play um, your positioning where you should be um, when the match is in progress so after the call of play, where you should be. Uh, we're going to go through signalling. I'll give you a few little um, hints and tips on signalling and, and how to remember what signal we're supposed to be using at that point. Um, we're going to talk about the boundaries and what the boundary is um, around um, the cricket pitch. So where the ball lands if it lands on the rope is it is it a six etc etc we'll go through the methods of dismissal um how how a player is going to be out and i've put in a bit of um an extra focus on on wides and no balls so the role of the umpire um there are usually two umpires but you know I've also been a 10 over umpire in the past. I got uh, chucked into umpire my first game exactly that way. Um, our job is to relay signals to the scorers 
so that the scorers can record exactly what we're signaling to them. Um, and I've done a bit of scoring in the past, so I know how confusing that can be. Um, hence why quite a few of us do become umpires. Um, and it's up to the scorer to let you know that they've seen your signal. They should always signal back to you. Um, so I, I always say to people, you know, have precise signals, not semaphore. Um, you know, if, it, if it's a no ball, shout no ball, give the signal, turn to the scorer and signal again. At that point, the scorer should be waving a fluorescent bat or something like that at you or flashing a light or whatever. Now, the role of the umpire is to ensure that the game, any game of cricket, is played according to the laws and obviously the most important thing of all, the spirit of cricket. You're there to judge what's fair and what's unfair. And you're there to facilitate the game for the players. So I am my one of my favorite sayings is I'm not I'm not there to police the game. I'm there to make sure the laws of the cricket are OK, the spirit of the game is healthy and the game just flows. And one of the things that you're obviously um, in charge of is whether or not the conditions are fit for play. I mean, if you don't want to, if you turn up and you're faced with a swimming pool at, um, at the side of the square, then, you know, it's your, you're the judges whether or not it's fit to play. And despite what the scorers might tell you, um, the, it is the umpire's responsibility for the correctness of the score. So some key characteristics of a good umpire are things like, you have to be honest, give what you see, you have to be completely unbiased. So even if it's your best friend, so in some cases your mum or your dad, I actually um, had the misfortune once to umpire my husband um, and I've never, I've never prayed so much in my entire life that the ball didn't go anywhere near his pants. <laughs> That's another story. He was out court eventually. You have to be confident. And one of the things that I felt when Steve approached me to do this uh, this evening with you all was if nothing else at the end of this, I would like to give you some confidence when you go out there and have to umpire. Knowledge, this is what we're doing tonight. Knowledge is power. If you go out there with uh, this tool bag, you'll be okay. Um, you have to be responsible because you're responsible for what is going on out there. Um, and you have to be understanding. So to a certain extent, uh, it's not allowed anymore. Many years ago, when a, when a bowler or a batsman went nuts when you said not out or out, um, you have to understand they're under an awful lot of pressure and it's not personal. They're not, uh, they're actually cross with themselves. And having listened to what I've just said, you have to be resilient. Um, you have to have very good communication skills um, throughout a match. Uh, that's one of the most important things is match management, good man management. Anyway, communication, as I said earlier, what is involved in good communication? Listening. Always listen to what's going on around you. Eye contact. If you give somebody out, look them in the eye before the finger goes up. Look them in the eye, put the finger up, give them out. Don't lose eye contact. Your choice of language. That, that's very important if someone's querying one of your decisions. Um, one, of, one, of my, one of my favorite sayings and an awful lot of, uh, of us umpires who umpire um, like I do, when questioned of, um, about giving somebody out, I, I thought it was, is one of the best choices of language you can possibly make. 
I thought it was going down leg. I thought it was going over. You get the gist. Always speak clearly. And your body language is very important. Don't, don't look aggressive. Don't look scared. You're just doing what you're out there. Again, here comes my favorite thing, confidence. I'm gonna skip over this little bit um, because it is important, um, the planning and preparation, um, but hopefully, you know, you, you will have um, umpires there who will have um, done all of this kind of thing. They will have checked the pitch, but even so, um, have, have a little look at the pitch. You know, what, what's it like? Is it, a, is it like my lawn is at the moment, needs a very good cut? Um, check the boundary. Make sure if you're supposed to have flags or you're supposed to have a rope in your league, check that, that they are in place. Always check the outfield for obstructions. Um, I think over the years, most umpires I've ever met have arrived at a ground um, and they found things like just discarded. It could be right the way down the bottom, miles out of the way, but it could be something, a jumper or in one, on one occasion, it was a roller. I arrived at a ground and there was a roller on the, uh, on the outfield. <coughs> so always check the outfield. If you've got any special regulations um, in your league, make sure that everybody is aware of those special regulations. And I would always say, if you're going to um, umpire in that match, make sure you're present at the toss. I'll definitely skip over this because you probably all, all know this. You, you, need, you need to make sure you've got the following. Um, I would always carry a spare bail. I've lost hundreds over the years. Um, but we get smashed. They seem to go in seasons. Two seasons ago, I lost seven in a season. Um, a ball counter, be that one of the clickers. Um, I actually use Winston Churchill coins that my grandfather gave me. He was an umpire and he gave me um, six Winston Churchill uh, coins. So, but it can be pebbles. It can be pound coins, two pound coins if you're feeling rich. Um, a notebook and pen always carry a notebook and pen and any regulations that uh, you know you've got that I on, on this case I'm saying ECB directive cards um, but you know if there's something in your league that um, is written down on a card carry it and a watch that's the kind of thing I would carry okay so positioning whether you're standing behind the stumps or whether you're standing at square leg or point. Always stand in the best possible place so you can have the best possible view. A little tip I will give you is something I always do when I arrive at ground. Usually after uh, my colleague and I have tossed a coin to decide who's going what end, is if you're, you're I understand that um, you're, you're using a 19, um, yard pitch. Obviously, I'm used to a 22. Um, but if you work out where you're going to stand behind the stumps, work out that distance and just put a little mark in the grass at square or point, so that your view is is uh, the view of of your match is exactly the same from wherever you're standing. So. As I said, one of, one of the umpires will stand at the bowler's end and one will stand at the striker's end. The bowler's end, um, you would always make sure that you position yourself so that you can see the bowler's arm, you can see the bowler's feet. So make sure you're nice and comfortable um, behind the stumps, like I said to you, so that you can see the bowler's feet. Um, keep as still as you possibly can. Keep your head very still. Don't suddenly look round to see if the bowler's coming. 
Um, I suppose to a certain extent doing men's cricket, I'm quite fortunate because believe you me, you can hear them coming behind you. So you don't have to turn your head. Um, but see the ball pitch and reach the batsman. See the line of the ball after it leaves the bowler's hand. I know you guys don't have um, LBW per se, but it's a good practice to get into. So <clears throat> be comfortable behind the stumps. As you can see by the picture that's on your screen now, where that guy's standing is far too close because you're not, from that angle, you're not gonna be able to see the bowler's arm. One, as you can see, is far too far back. Um, gracious me, that is a long way. Movement. It's very important that you're always ready to move. Uh, that's to get yourself into the best possible position so that you can see um, a possible run out. Um, you always, should always endeavour to remain safe at all times and don't ever take your eyes off the ball because even a softball like um, you guys are playing, when it's travelling at speed, it can still hurt. So always keep yourself safe. Always be still. So if you get yourself into a position and you think, oh, gosh, I'm not in the right position, stay still, don't move. Stay where you are because you'll get yourself into even more trouble if you're trying to get into a different position and you might get in the way. So I've got a little video here and I will play it for you. Um, positioning at the striker's end. Um, you must stand in line with the pop increase so that you can judge stumpings, hit wicket, run out. Let's have a look. Oh, there's no sound on this one. Play that again. Watch the umpire. In that case, the umpire was reversing rather quickly to get out of the way. But, you know, move, get out of the way so that the bats can run past you. The bowler, the fielders can throw the ball in. You've gone to the right side. Keep your eye on the ball. I always tend to go the opposite way to the ball unless the ball is behind the stumps. So this positioning striker's end, in line with the pop increase. Now, I understand that you don't have return creases in your, um, your cricket, but the pop increase, will. the easiest thing I can tell you about the pop increase is it belongs to you. That's yours. As an umpire, that, the pop increase belongs to the umpire. So this is where you would stand if you were at square leg in line with the pop increase. If you're standing at point, that's where you're gonna be standing, in line with the pop. And as you can see, um, that chap has got his feet either side of the pop increase line. So line yourself up with it. Now we come to signals. So you're signaling to the scorers. Everybody's seen this one who's ever picked up a bat and absolutely hated it. So that signal is out. If you're going to give somebody out, as I said to you before, look them in the eye and do it, but just hold that position. Stand still. Put your arm up, put your finger up and stand still so that they know they are out. There's no argument about it. You've said they're out. The next signal is if you, if you want to cancel any signal, 
we've seen quite a few of those um, in recent international cricket um, with the DRS, but just tap your shoulders and that's your signal cancelled to the scorer. This signal here is a buy. With a buy, it means it's past the bat and it's not touched the batsman or the bat. It's gone straight past and they've run. The easiest way to remember that is the ball has gone by. Bye, bye ball. That's how I always remembered it when I was learning. The signal is you're tapping your leg for a leg by. So it's hit the bat, not the bat, the batsman. It's hit the batsman before it's gone and they've run. No ball, this is ever so loud for a front foot no ball. And here's your wide, make it wide. Turn, turn, don't helicopter, put your arms back down, turn to the scorer and signal wide again. No confusion then, they know exactly what, you, what you're doing. The next signal I'm going to show you is dead ball. They cross over your arms. You're not going to, you're not going to see many of these in, in, in all my years. I haven't seen many of these, this signal. That's a signal for a short run. He hasn't got an itchy shoulder. It's a signal for a short run. This is the signal for a, a four. Always start and finish with your arm across your body. That way it cannot be misconstrued as a no ball. Finish with your arm across your chest like the chap on the screen is. That's a four and this one is a six. If you're all happy, with that, I'm going to move on to boundaries. As I said to you, it's quite important um, to know what the boundary is and when a ball has gone over the boundary for a six. So the inside edge of the rope marks the boundary. So if a ball lands on the rope, it's a six. If it lands over the rope, it's a six. If it lands inside the rope, it's a four. Now I put this, I put this um, slide in for you because I, I wasn't sure if you guys would, um, would would know much about giving a guard. So I thought, well, I'll pop this one in. And um, Steve has actually said this is going to be recorded. So um, it it's just a just a simple hint of what exactly to give when someone says to you, can I have middle? Pretty explanatory. But if they say, can I have two leg or middle and leg, then that's where the bat lines up. The other, the other side of that middle stump would be middle and off. Sometimes occasionally you might even get somebody ask you for off stump. But if it's leg stump, as long as you've got absolutely assured that their back is lined up beautifully in front of the leg stump or the gap between leg stump and the middle stump, or in front of the middle stump as just a just a little hint and tips there so that you can uh, give the bat a guard. So we're going to go on to extras now. We talked about buys and leg buys earlier. 
So the extras come under two headings, buys and leg buys. Um, extras, as far as wides and no balls, um, yeah, they are the, the fault of the bowler. So buys, as I said to you, wave the ball, wave the bat, uh, wave the ball bye bye. It's gone for a bye. And they are scored if any runs are completed by the batsman from a ball, but obviously it can't be a wide, which passes him without touching him or his, his equipment, her or her equipment. <coughs> the, the vital word there, words there, um, buys are only scored if they run. If they don't run, they don't get them. And those runs are credited to the batsman and they don't count against the bowler. Leg buys, as I said before, tap your leg. Leg buys are scored if any runs are completed by the batsman from a ball which hits him and makes no contact with his bat. Leg buys are only allowed if the batsman has attempted to play the ball or tried to avoid being hit by the ball. The runs are not credited to the batsman and they don't count against the bowler. I'll just show you this video. You can read that yourself and I will. Right. I'm sure we called a wide. There it is. The beauty of that was a lovely loud shout. What they now they now shout wide wide ball because that's what the uh, laws of cricket say. Wide ball. Some umpires still are old school and only shout wide, but we're now instructed to shout wide ball. But make it nice and loud. So. The easiest thing to say about a wide ball is if the bat is playing a normal stroke and the ball goes outside of their normal stroke, then that is a wide. So as you see on that picture, if he can only get that with the end of his bat, that is not a normal stroke. So that ball would have every one of you shouting wide. Or if the batsman causes a ball to be a wide. So he's moved backwards, making that a wide. So that is not a wide. He's made that, him, he's done that himself. So if, if the bat says, well, wasn't that, wasn't that a wide amp? You say, no, don't move backwards. And the, and the same goes for if the batsman moves forward and still misses it. It might look, might look cross, but it's not a wide. The height at which the ball passes the striker also needs to be taken into account. So for instance, a ball that passes at waist level is easier to hit than one passing him at ground level. So you could almost say that the one at waist height might not be a wide, but the one passing him at ground. We're going to go on to um, no ball foot faults, and I'm going to ask you all to completely um, ignore the back foot fault faults because you don't in your kind of cricket. Apparently, um, so Steve told me earlier, um, you don't have the return crease. So we'll ignore that bit and we'll go the the bowl
in all rays, but it has to be behind the pop increase and on this uh, joint. Obviously, one thing that not many people um, can you, am I still with you? My internet's just sent me a message. Um, on the side of the imaginary line, join the two middle stumps. So the bowler's foot cannot cross that line. So that, that foot is fine, but we're ignoring the back foot. That would be a back foot no ball in normal times. That's absolutely fine. If you look at the uh, pop increase and you can see the inside edge of the pop increase, that's where you're looking for a, for a, um, a foot fault no ball. As I said to you, that pop increase belongs to the umpire. That's a mahusive no ball, that one, as you can see. That's both fine. Ignoring the back foot, that one's fine. Again, absolutely fine. Raised, but part of that foot is behind the pop increase. We're going to come to the methods of dismissal now. Um, I'm not sure. I can't actually see the chat. So for a cricketer to be out, there has to be an appeal. So someone can't be out unless somebody on the field of play, in the fielding side has shouted at the top of their voice, how's that? So you can be bow out bold. That one was severely bold, as you can tell with the bales and stumps flying everywhere. But it cannot be from a no ball. When people are, are scoring, bold always takes precedent over any other dismissal. It's the king of dismissals. You can be out caught. If the ball touches the bats, batsman's bat, or any part of the glove holding the bat and is caught fairly, then he is out caught. And when I say to you the bowl, the, the, the glove, the batsman's glove, batswoman's glove, holding the bat, that includes the wristband of their glove. Again, Court takes precedence over all dismissals except bold. But you cannot be caught from a no ball. It has to be a fair catch. So make sure that the ball hasn't hit the ground. Has it lodged in the clothing of a fielder, including his helmet? The ball rebat rebounds off an umpire or a fielder, including his helmet now. If you're not sure, always wander over, do it quite quickly, but still wander, relaxed, in control and confident, and ask your colleague if in their opinion the ball was grounded. Right, here's a couple of videos. This, the, the sound on these videos is the sound we've all been missing in the last 12 months. The sound of the crowd.
Oh, big shot, high in the air. Has he got enough of this? Has he got enough? Oh, what about this? That's gone high. Root comes in. Oh, I think he's all right. I think he's absolutely fine. Controls the ball. Chucks it away. It's sensational, whatever it is. Wait. 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 Rob Bailey yeah, says no wait. I've asked him to wait. Okay. Robin, you're going to get him We're waiting. I'm gone. Show it again. Oh, big shot, high in the air. Has he got enough of this? Has he got enough? Oh, what about this? That's gone high. Now, the, reason, the one thing I wanted to say to you all about that particular court, not so much about the actual catch itself, but was the match management of that umpire um, just quietly in a normal tone telling a player there was no reason for them to chirp in it was all in it was all in under control but it was a it was a pretty magnificent catch i'm hoping i've got the next one now Brilliant from Steve Finn. I'm sure it's brilliant from Steve Finn. He's not the first to do it, but it takes a great presence of mind. If you think you're going to go over that rope, you're falling backwards. The umpires are just going to check this. Haddon was happy. Haddon was walking off, happy with what Finn did. Now, as he overbalances, he knows he's going to overstep the rope, so he throws the ball back in just. He does. And now look, he's got to step back in and catch it again inside play, and he does it. Excellent from Steve Finn. Brilliant, brilliant. Yes, not the first to do it, but you don't see many six foot seven fast bowlers pulling off. Another amazing catch, that one. And another one. Yeah! Board is standing where he is. The umpire's not moving up. Down and having a close look. Fine, delivery's okay. Just. Right, now then. Oh yes, glove, big glove. Well, instant impression, it's come off the glove there. That was the instant impression. As I said to you all before, off the glove, out court. So, breaking the wicket, I'm gonna show you the next slide it's not exactly uh, modern technology but it uh, it explains everything to you the wicket is down if the bales are removed the wicket is down if one bale is removed so it is, it is uh, sufficient to have just one bale off the top. <clears throat> if one bale is off, it's sufficient for the purpose of putting the wicket down. So occasionally you might have a bale removed, um, I don't know, by a wicket keeper, even sometimes um, with the wind, but uh, you need to get that um, second bale off if that is the case. A fielder may remove the, the bales, but it has to be with the ball in that particular hand, as you can see from that picture, or any part of the arm provided that the ball is in the hand of the arm that's being used. 
They can knock it off with their elbow if they want to. Uh, run out. Steve was telling me that in your cricket, there are quite a few run outs. So I've got a few um, videos here to show you. So if I, the batsman, is out of his ground and the wicket is broken by a member of the fielding side, whoever is nearer to the wicket broken is out. But obviously that is only the case if both batsmen have left their ground. I've got a video here for you. Such a shame there was no uh, no commentary on that one. No idea why. Another video. The ball reaching out towards extra cover. He settled down. Go on. Oh, big appeal. He's got a little. Had a very good work. The first thing to note here is did he get a fingertip on that one? Yeah, there was a contact and the ball hits the stumps. We'll have to wait for another angle. Well, he gets a finger on it. Does he get back? This is the one. This is the angle. Uh, ooh, who's making this decision? The line is the umpires. The line is out. I don't think we're going to see two. So the, the umpire has to consider, did the bowler touch the ball? Now imagine that in real time. Just the tip of a finger. And did the batsman make his ground before the wicket was broken? That was bonkers close. That was so close. Another one? Watson has actually gone past Cadditch and put his bat in first. Then Cadditch is the man to go. They've almost there identically. Oh, this will be a side on. And neither wants to go. Certainly Watson doesn't want... I don't know why it has to be him. It's a real uh, touch and go. Cadditch just does not know Watson so far. Who puts his foot back in first is the key. Photo finish. You can't pick that. Watson, Watson was in the air. Yes, he was. Watson Caddick's, is in the air, so Caddick's Caddick's down survives. First. Rocks, paper, scissors, here we go. <laughs> like, Cadditch has done nothing wrong here. I thought he might have raced back into his crease. But he, he just wanders back nicely, look, looks around for Watson. Where is he? Where, where are you? Let's have a look at this. What's your decision at home? Cadditch. Absolutely classic, that one. It's uh, a very famous video now and uh, a very hard one to call in real time. So next method of being out, stumped. You cannot be stumped from a no ball, but you absolutely can be stumped from a, a wide ball. The wicket keeper must break the wicket. with their hand, or as we showed earlier, with the ball, or kicking, throwing the ball onto the wicket, or the ball rebounding from his pads person helmet. And obviously the striker is out of his ground, as in that picture there. Here's a really good video of Stumped.
The lovely Johnny Bairstow. Fabulous wicket keeper. Hit wicket. If once the bowler has entered his delivery stride and delivered the ball fairly, so it's a fair delivery, not a no ball, the wicket is put down by the batsman preparing to receive the delivery or setting off for his first run or making a legal second attempt to hit the ball. So you can make a second attempt to hit the ball if you're protecting your own wicket. He will be deemed to be out hit wicket if the wicket is broken by anything other than the ball. Another video here. <laughs> Having said that, Swan and Kiesvedder have just alerted us all to the fact that a bale has come off. All will be revealed any moment now. Goes a long way back on these stumps. There goes, yeah, he's trodden on it. He's just brushed the leg stump, hasn't he? Kiesvedder alerts that straight away. So initially there he's fine. When he sets off the run, he doesn't quite manage to avoid that leg stump. It's just a brush of it no more. He just gently dislodges the bail. And that is... And finally... Any questions? I hope you're all still awake. I hope I haven't put you all to sleep. Where's Steve gone? He yep. promised me faithfully he would yep. be here for the no. questions. <laughs> I'm still here. We've got nothing in the in the chat box. So um, if anyone's got any questions, feel free to uh, either pop it in the chat box or uh, feel free to unmute we'll yourself and ask. No, I think I think that's everything. Oh, hold on. Oh no, Jane Jane Morrison. Hello, thanks, Yvonne. Um, can we have this stuff um, on? Can we have the slides sent to us? No. Okay. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> there's quite a lot to take in. And yeah, there's a lot. I know. And I, I promise you faithfully, um, I culled that presentation because it's supposed to be 97 slides <laughs> okay. and I culled it. it. There's a lot to take in, some of which applies to the softball format that we're playing, some of yeah. which doesn't, but Might not, no. some stuff I've learned today that is yeah. very applicable, but it would be really helpful if I could reread it sort of more slowly and just reflect yeah. on everything. If that's possible, I, I'd appreciate it. I don't know if anyone else would. Thank you, Yvonne. I just hope you were you were all uh, entertained and not asleep in the background because I couldn't see you any of you. Um, like I said to you earlier, um, if uh, if any of you are interested in taking any of the umpiring courses, um, hopefully, with the wind in the west, we will uh, be back to face to face courses and not the Zoom malarkey. Um, and they're much, much easier, much more interactive, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but if you are, just let Steve know. And thank you all for attending. Yvonne, just very quickly, we've got two very quick questions. So um, this is a question from Anna. And it says, uh, in ladies cricket, we don't wear gloves. If the ball hits the hand holding the bat, is that out? Well, it depends what's in your regulations, I would have said. Um, but but that's um, it's a hard one for me to answer because I think, to be honest, if somebody, and ah, actually, somebody did once 
and um, um, a gentleman of uh, more more years than me, actually, which is hard to believe. Um, he did actually once come out to bat, and he never wore gloves his entire cricket career. He'd never once wore gloves, um, and so we did have to say to him, if it if it if it touches your hand, it counts just the same. So yes, out. Yeah, we'll look at doing something around that one. Um, and then just uh, one other one was around um, injury. Um, so if someone just gets injured on the field of play, would you stop play and just call a dead ball? Dead ball immediately. Absolutely. Yeah. No hesitation at all. Immediately call dead ball. And the other thing is as well, don't forget, you're not doctors. You don't know how seriously somebody is hurt. So the sooner you can get um, attention, be it a coach, be it whatever, to them, the better. Okay, and then one final one, Yvonne from Abby. Um, and it just says, um, can you just please check? Have we lost Steve? Uh, she may have just misheard you, um, but she thought you said that um, boys count on the batting score. Assuming that you meant the batting side rather than the batsman's individual score. Yes. Total, the total score, not the individual score. Okay. Yes. You probably didn't, I probably said it wrong. Probably didn't mishear me at all. You could play you could play my mistake back and back and back if I said you've got it on the recording, so you should be fine. Right. Any other questions? No, I think. That's that's everything there, Yvonne. So uh, thank you very much for that. I've You're certainly welcome. learned some stuff. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, I'll certainly get hold of the slides from Yvonne and I will circulate those round along with other, um, I guess, uh, certificate, uh, certificated courses. So if you do want to go further in umpiring, then I'll certainly send you those details and you can uh, start your journeys. That'd be great. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks, Yvonne, and have a... Thank you very much. Good Thank rest you. of your evening. Stay safe and well, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks a lot.